Oh, it's on. Okay, it's time for lesson 77. Um, inequalities just don't go away. How many of these have we done? Uh, too many. Okay, here we go. It's early. The uh, new thing today is going to be just throwing in a few extra things to do first. So it says two-step and multi-step inequalities. And uh, so I'm going to review the three basic rules that we have to follow for inequalities and then just work through some examples and maybe show you uh, one or two ways to do each one. Think about it and how you can... Sometimes you don't even have to use one of the tricky rules. You can just... Use your brain. Okay, so remember if you got any questions, you know, uh, what or K, then um, leave a comment below or text me or email or whatever. Uh, I'm available to you to answer your math questions. Yeah. What? Hey? Who said that? Whatever. Okay, so uh, hopefully you have your notebook and you've got some uh, some answer paper. A straight edge will probably be useful today for drawing some number lines. Okay, inequalities are things with, with these kind of thingies in them, remember? And uh, rules that we've talked about in the other lessons were that as long as we're just um, adding or subtracting something from both sides, we don't need to treat this any different than an equation with an equal sign in it. Second, if we're just multiplying or dividing both sides by the same thing, we don't need to treat it any different than an equation with an equal sign in it. The only time when we need to worry about something extra or changing the thing around is when we're going to multiply or divide by a negative number. And uh, I'll show you a way around that today. If you don't want to use that, we can, we can fix that. But in general, if we can get our inequality to have the variable, or it's usually x, but it might be another letter, on the left side, the, uh, the arrows there will tell us which way uh, to draw our picture. The greater than, less than signs, we can treat them like they're arrows. And again, remember, if something says equal to, also equal to will fill in that circle. And if it just says greater than or less than, we keep that circle open. Other than that, everything is more or less the same as uh, everything else that we've done before. So, man, I just uh, put the examples that they have in the book up there and just talk through them and show you how in a couple of them I wouldn't even worry about rule three. I might just tweak things a little bit and, uh, and go from there because I can be smarter than the book sometimes. You can too. I believe in you. I said that before. They'll mean it. So here's their first example. And uh, we do just have to keep things like PEMDAS in mind. Um, they're going to throw some of those things in there with a little bit of math to do before we get to other things. But here, this is multi step. This is two step because if you look at it, there's two things we need to undo first. And when you, when you undo something to get just to M, Here's, in some cases, do PEMDAS backwards. So the A and the S, addition and subtraction, that's going to happen first, and then you get the multiplication division that happens next. But um, we're not going to multiply or divide by a negative number, so we don't need to switch that. Our answer is going to end up having the inequality sign like that. Okay? So we're going to start off by adding 12 to both sides, and that gives us... Over here, negative 24, and over here, 8m, and then there's one step left to do, and that's divide both sides by 8, which gives you 1m is less than or equal to, and you do the math over here, negative 3. We draw ourselves a number line, and we're going to put a negative 3 on there. m is less than or equal to, so we put the circle there, it says this can also be equal to, and then since the variable is on the left, we look at this and we say, oh, that arrow must go this way. And, uh, and we've got ourselves our graph. Okay, that one's pretty straightforward. I don't think they even needed to put that one in there, but they did. Let's, uh, let's look at one that might need that negative rule. 
and that would be 9 minus 3m is greater than 21. Okay, so if we're going to do this multi-step, then uh, we would do what we just did, and we take care of the addition and subtraction first. Okay, and then I'll go back and do this a different way. So let's, uh, let's get m all by itself on this side by subtracting 9 from both sides. So 21 minus 9 is 12, and that leaves us with a negative 3m on this side. And then we'll have to divide by negative 3 on both sides, which will switch the sign around. So m will be left on this side, and on this side we'll have negative 4. And then we can graph this. We could put that at negative 4, put a circle there. We're not going to fill it in. And we see that the because the variable's on this side, the arrow tells us that we draw our arrow that way. Now, okay, that's fine. But that negative rule is always the tricky one to remember because you're busy doing math, right? And then you got to do something else and you don't maybe even understand why. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to see this over here. This is an addition, subtraction type of problem. I'm going to move, instead of moving the 9 over, I'm going to move the 3m to the other side. So that would mean I add 3m, and this requires no change in the signs. I'll have 9 is uh, greater than 21 and 3m. And then I'll play that exact same game and just move everything else that's not an m to the other side. Just m's over here now. It's not a big deal. So I'll subtract 21 from both sides and get negative 12 is greater than 3m and divide by 3 and I get I get the same same basic thing right? M is on this side, but it's less than that negative 4. I think we're at a point now where we can just read that thing and say less than, not equal to. M is smaller than negative 4 and uh, draw our arrow there. The only thing there, if we do that, is we can't use the direction of the uh, inequal, inequality sign to, uh, to solve that problem. You could just rewrite it and put the M over there and let's say that that's uh, the same thing. As another thing. That way, I don't have to remember that that rule. I can just I can just read this answer and say, well, what do I do with that with that uh, arrow and that circle? Okay, so I didn't even use rule number three there. I finished it off, and I just have my variable on the other side. That's not really a problem. If if uh, only the thing is, if you have to have that little trick of variable on the left side, which way does the arrow go? And you can't remember which what greater than or less than means. By this point, I hope you know that. And you can do that. Alrighty then. Do another one of those. They throw in a little bit of extra do this and do that first. Um, sometimes they just have to work really hard to, to write something that looks ridiculous to make you think a little bit before you do stuff. And uh, all we got here is a little bit of math on this side here first. Negative 8 plus a negative 11. All right. Uh, negative 8 minus 11. So ask you to do this math over here first. And then this didn't change. And they throw that in there to make you think that you're going to end up having to do that, uh, that negative rule. But let me play the same game I played with the last one and just say, well, why don't I just put that over here? And then I don't have to use the negative rule. So I'm going to add 7D to both sides. So to get 7D minus 19 is still less than this side. And uh, then add 19. That gives me 7, this is beautiful, and divide by 7, and I get that D is less than 1, easy to graph. There's my 1, open circle, and D is less than that, so D is over here somewhere. Didn't have to use that negative rule at all, and, and I got to put my variable on the left for free. So, sweet butter. Okay, it's a little bit of extra work moving things to the one side or the other, but I like that better than having to remember to switch the sign rule thingy. 
Uh, just a couple more. This one requires a little bit of, of extra algebra before we get to it. Um, this is distribution over here on this side, and on this side we have to take care of the fact that that negative is not going to get squared. Only the 12 is going to get squared because it does not say that if that was the case, the negative would get squared and the 12 would get squared, but it's not. So, just 12 squared with a negative sign in front of it. Let's work this side first, and we'll just distribute over here. We'll have negative 6 times 4 is negative 24, and negative 6 times negative x is a positive 6x. That's good. Sign doesn't change, and over here we say that has to be a negative, and then we square that 12, and now we're down to the same thing we had before. So I'm going to go fast here. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Um, well, I was going to go fast until I had to think. Negative 120. Yeah, sure. Okay. And then divide by 6. So this ends up being x all by itself there. Greater than or equal to. And then this is a negative uh, 20. Okay. So there's my number line. I'm going to throw in the negative 20 right there. I'm going to open that circle and then I'm going to close it up because it's also equal to. And this tells me. Since the variable's on this side, it tells me that my answer is somewhere over that way. You agree? You better, because that's right there in the book. Anyway, and last one. Last one, fractions. I hate it when they do this with fractions, because some of you don't know how to use fractions. So let's do the... Um, do the easy way and let's get rid of fractions by multiplying through a big number that will get rid of fractions. So we got to think what's the least common multiple or the lowest common multiple of 4 and 2 and 10. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. 20 is our magic number. So everything gets multiplied by 20. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15. 20 times a half is going to be 10, and 20 times 7 divided by 10, 20 divided by 10 is 2, 2 times 7 is 14. So this is equivalent to what we just had without fractions, and then we just can finish off the math here. Subtract 10 from each side. The sign, the inequality doesn't change. 15y equals 4, and it doesn't matter that I get a fraction here, 4 fifteenths is still on the number line. I'll just put it in there. I'll leave an open circle, and then this tells us that our arrow ought to go that way. Okay? I'd rather do that than trying to combine fractions and find all the little things in there. Those 7 tenths, 1 half, and 3 fourths is not too bad. You could change them into decimals if you wanted to. And you could have 0 0.75, 0 0.5, and 0.7. And then just multiply all of those by, by 10 or by 100. And then you'd end up getting, well, you get this. Something like that. Or something equivalent. So there you go. Two-step and multi-step inequalities. Got like, what, three lessons ago? 78, 79, 80? We well, can do this. I'm running out of t-shirts, so got to finish up soon. We'll see you next time.